Before this video starts, if you enjoy this video, there are many more like it here on the channel with many more like it's to come in the future, so subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I would really appreciate it. If you're a fan of obscure wrestling trivia and wrestling mysteries, then this is the place for you. Also drop a like and comment on this video, it only takes one second and makes a massive difference. WWE have had some of the most controversial storylines in wrestling history, from the Katie Vick angle to the Muhammad Hassan character, not to mention the romance between Mark Henry and Mae Young. However, not all storylines in WWE make it past the writer's desk, with some angles being considered too much for the audience to handle. So tonight we are going to be taking a deep dive into 7 cancelled WWE storylines that were too hot for TV. Number 1. The Stephanie McMahon Kiss My A** Club In 2001, Vince McMahon would start the Mr McMahon Kiss My A** Club segments, where Vince would punish wrestlers by forcing them to get down on their knees in the middle of the ring, pucker up and literally kiss the boss's a**. The segments would happen sporadically throughout the 2000s with the likes of William Regal, Mick Foley and even his own son Shane McMahon being members of the club that was so exclusive it would make Fraser Crane green with envy. However, there were once plans for Stephanie McMahon to debut her very own Kiss My Ass Club in 2002. During this time, Stephanie was the general manager of SmackDown and was in a heated debate with the Raw GM, Eric Bischoff. At that year's Unforgiven pay-per-view, Stephanie and Eric would each pick a tag team to represent them in a match, with the winning GM choosing a forfeit for the other. Bischoff would select 3 minute warning as his team of choice, while Stephanie would pick Billy and Chuck, with the forfeits being that if Bischoff's team won, Stephanie would have to perform HLA, which for those who may not remember was Bischoff's acronym for Hot Lesbian Action. Meanwhile, if Steph's team won, Bischoff would be the first inductee into the Stephanie McMahon Kiss My Ass Club. It was originally planned for Bischoff's team to lose the match, therefore making him the first member of the club. However, plans were changed at the last minute as Bischoff was said to have been uncomfortable with the segment, so his team would instead pick up the win. The idea was even brought up again and planned to happen in 2008, when Stephanie McMahon got into a feud with Chris Jericho. The feud would culminate with Stephanie firing Jericho, and it was at this point that Jericho was originally planned to have joined the Stephanie McMahon Kiss My Ass Club in an attempt to get his job back. However, once again plans were next at the last minute, as it's been said that Jericho was also uncomfortable with the segment. Number 2. The Sable Kiss My Ass Club in 2003, Sable would return to the WWE after a four year hiatus from the company. What's ironic about Sable's return is that the reason she originally left the company was due to a harassment lawsuit she filed against Vince McMahon, yet upon her return she would be thrust into a storyline where she would play the part of McMahon's on screen mistress. This would include a plan for Sable to begin her very own Kiss My Ass Club where Vince would have people kiss Sable's ass as opposed to his own. The angle was tried out at a number of non-televised house shows at the time, with this photograph taken from a fan in the audience being the only known footage of the Sable Kiss My Ass Club in existence. Number 3. Horny Matt Hardy At the 2001 No Mercy pay-per-view, Matt Hardy was involved in a segment where he was approached backstage by Stacey Keebler prior to her lingerie match against Tori Wilson. Stacey would show Matt her outfit for the upcoming match, leaving Matt with a smile on his face. Matt was almost caught by his girlfriend at the time Lita, however luckily for Matt, Stacey left the room seconds before Lita showed up. In an interview about the segment, Hardy stated, the crowd cracked up and everybody in the back thought it was a terrific piece of business. So the next night on Raw, we did a bit where I went into the women's locker room looking for Lita, but instead found a topless Trish Stratus. Whoa, excuse me, I'm uh, pushed. Um, I'm looking for Lita. Did you see Lita? No, I was interested in the match. 
Hardy also stated, There was talk of doing another Hornley Matt bit on Smackdown where I would ogle Stephanie, but it never came to be. The angle pretty much faded away. Number 4 Ken and Ryan Shamrock Number 4 Ken and Ryan Shamrock in 1999, Alicia Webb would make her WWE debut, who was the real-life girlfriend of Ken Shamrock. However, on television, Webb would go by the name Ryan Shamrock and play the role of Ken Shamrock's younger sister. Shortly after her debut, Ryan would get romantically involved with Val Venus on screen. However, the original plans were for Ryan to actually get romantically involved with her storyline brother, Ken. Ken Shamrock stated in an interview that he refused to participate in this storyline as he didn't want his children seeing it on television. He also stated that after refusing to work the angle, he would be jobbed out and forced to lose matches on TV for the next three months as a punishment for not going along with the planned angle. Number 5 Vince and Stephanie McMahon In a similar storyline to the Ken and Ryan Shamrock angle, it was once planned for Vince McMahon to have been the storyline father to Stephanie McMahon's baby back in 2008, with the storyline being pitched by none other than Vince McMahon himself. Bruce Pritchard recently spoke about the planned angle, saying, Jane wasn't on the call, but it was, it was during the time that Stephanie was, was pregnant and Vince was trying to figure out if he could write that into storyline. It was an entire Sunday, it was an entire day of my life that I would never get back. The funny thing is, we were all on the phone going over everything, and it was a classic Vince. What if I was the father? Because no one thinks he's serious, and it's kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'd yeah. Be funny, oh, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. It became, well, what if? Thankfully, the storyline never went ahead, as this one would have competed with the Katie Vick angle for creepiest storyline in WWE history. Number 6 Stacy Keebler's Baby's Father. Our next entry on the list isn't technically from WWE, as it took place in WCW in the year 2000. The storyline in question saw Stacey Keebler involved in a pregnancy angle, where she would make the announcement that the father of the child was not her on-screen boyfriend at the time, David Flair, but instead someone else. Keebler refused to state who the real father was, leading to a drawn-out storyline where David was left trying to find out who the father was. This led to one of the lowest points in WCW history, when David Flair took on Buff Bagwell in a DNA First Blood match, where David would try and draw blood from Bagwell in order to find out if he was the father of Keebler's child-to-be. However, after a month or so, this dreadful storyline would be dropped completely without explanation as to who the father was. A few months later, Stacy would reappear on an episode of Monday Night Nitro after a long hiatus and say that she had lied about being pregnant all along. However, the original plans for the storyline were for Ric Flair to have been the father of Stacey's baby, which would have led to a feud between Ric and David Flair, who would fight over Stacey and her newborn child. Number 7 Crystal and Edge In 2007, former WWE Diva Search contestant Crystal Marshall would become the on-screen girlfriend of SmackDown General Manager Teddy Long. This would lead to the two getting married on an episode of SmackDown with Teddy Long having a heart attack and falling into a coma at the end of the ceremony. However, the original plans for the wedding were for Edge to cause Teddy to have a heart attack and steal his girlfriend as revenge for Teddy stripping Edge of his world title while he was out injured. Edge and Crystal would then go on to have a similar run to what Edge and Lita did the year prior with the two having a heated on-screen relationship. However, Crystal refused to take part in the storyline due to her real-life relationship with Bobby Lashley at the time, and as a result, she was released from the company. Shortly after this, Bobby Lashley would also leave the WWE, and the two would move on to compete in Impact Wrestling together. Which of these storylines would you like to have seen become a reality? Let me know in the comments section, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow Wrestle with Andy on Instagram and Twitter, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.